going on everybody this your boy kenny k all day every day uh, let y'all take a ride with me on the way home currently we are at 55 miles range left We got a 45 minute drive to home. How's everybody doing? This your boy Kenny K. Once again, um, taking this ride home from work. About a 40, 45 minute uh, commute. Oh, 45 minute commute to work. Currently, uh, we're at about 54 uh, miles. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing about my BMW i3 is that if I charge it to a full charge, for some strange odd reason, from it, from it just sitting. automatically loses about 20 miles even when it's cut off and I'm in the office away from from the car it could be at 80 percent when I come out it'll be at about 60 percent or 59 percent so in my mind my intuition is telling me that my uh, 12 volt battery is about to go out and when you really think about it, the 12-volt uh, battery the 12 volt battery is a 20 amp hour battery. So in my mind, I'm thinking if the battery is dead or dying, when you charge at the charging station, of course, the charging station also charges uh, the 12 volt battery. Or charges the big big battery in which case the big battery in turns uh charges the 12 volt battery and again the 12 volt battery is a 20 amp hour battery so for my car to lose 20 amps from just sitting in an off position tells me that because the battery is dead even at a full charge, the 12 volt battery is gonna pull 20 volts. I mean, I'm sorry, 20 amps from the high voltage battery or the big battery to keep itself charged. And that's where I'm losing my, my uh, 20 miles or 20% of my battery uh, from a sitting still, uh, a sitting still standpoint. Powered off. So I guess my next big purchase is going to be a new 12 volt battery. But right now, um, like I said we're traveling home. Yeah, what? Uh, we're traveling home. When I left the charging station at work today. Around about lunchtime, which was 12 o'clock. I charged it up today to about 89%. Took about seven miles from the charging station back to my office, which puts me at about 80%. Went in the office for about another four hours and when I came back out instead of the car being at somewhere around about 80% when I parked it when I came out it was at about 55% so I lost that much range from the car just sitting in an off position so something is drawing 20% of my battery or 20 miles 
range even when the car is in off position. Only thing I can think it is is, is the 12 volt battery being dead or dying and to keep itself going, it, it pulls from the high voltage battery to renew itself uh, and gain that, that, that uh, 20 amps back. As far as our commute home, I originally stated that when we got in the car, it was somewhere around about 55 miles. Got a 45 mile trip. Currently, we are at 47 miles. So I have to literally kind of just kind of cruise slow because I, I really don't have but 16 uh, miles available on my Rex. So just gotta gotta take it easy, you know what I'm saying? Um, You know, just talking to y'all about the i3. I guess I can say, man, I love it enough to have kept it this long. Um, I loved it enough to upgrade to a BEV to get me back and forth, you know, in my, my 45 minute to an hour commute. I loved it enough to even do my own battery upgrade to get more range. I love my i3 enough to have dealt with all the hiccups that came after my upgrade which was about seven thousand dollars in expenses dealing with coating the battery and going to different shops and one thing I'll say to you guys is that uh, with these i3s you have to really really be careful about taking them to little side shops because a lot of these guys, they see this car, it's an interesting car, it's, it's, it's electric. And a lot of these mechanic shops just wanna get their hands on it and get up under the hood just to see what's under there. And they'll tell you, yeah, we can work on it. And uh, knowing good and well they can't work on this car, knowing good and well they don't have the tools to work on the car, or the uh, scan tools to code the car, and they'll sit there and tell you, yeah, we can work on the car. We'll take it. We can fix it. And you leave your car with them. And the bad thing about the i3 is, or any BMW for that matter of fact, I mean, I'm speaking BMW because that's what I drive, is that you can't just let people mess with, 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 with your car because one thing about these newer cars, one thing about the BMW is that everything has a module. Um connected to it and each one of those modules communicate with the main computer of the car and when you let these 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 side shops take your car knowing they can't work on it they go hooking up basic generic scan tools that they brought from AutoZone talking about they're trying to code your car or delete something and they mess around and, and lock your car up because if they mess up the code in, in one of the modules, that can easily brick your car. And I can speak from experience because that's what happened to me. I took my car to a side mechanic shop because my AC wasn't working and the guy said, uh, yeah, I can work on that car. And I asked him, did he have a specific software? Which is the software needed to code a BMW. And he said, yeah, I think so. I should have took my car right then and there, but um, said I'd give the fella a chance. You know, it was supposed to be like a little quick little, you know, code the uh, AC compressor or replace the AC compressor. A long story short, the next day came, and you know, I'm. I'm getting up early in the morning excited to hear the good news and I didn't get a phone call from the mechanic shop saying hey listen we're still working on your car or, or hey look we ran into this problem or anything I didn't get a call so 12 o'clock comes I'm like okay something's fishy about this so I call the mechanic shop and um, guess what I'm told 
Oh man, we can't get your car crank. It won't start. Like, it won't start? What do you mean it won't start? Said the computer went bad in the car. I drove my car to you. There was nothing wrong with the computer. The computer's working fine. So then he tell, turns around and tells me that, hey, listen, it's going to be $1,500 to replace that computer that went bad. And I had to go up there and tell him, how do I, how do I drive my car to you working and running? And within 24 hours, my car is a brick. And you're telling me you can't move it, it won't move, it won't start, it won't crank, no lights, no nothing. But you're going to charge me? And I brought my car to you working? Long story short, I walked up paying them the $1,500 for uh, the computer that they blew up trying to code it with some generic uh, scan tool equipment. Okay? And then come to find out, the dude put the computer in there and he still didn't have the equipment to code it. So what all he did was just stick the computer in there and the car saw the computer and says, okay, this is this 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 module or computer is not locked so I can drive, but I don't know what it is. He didn't even code it. So something told me to take it to BMW and I took it to BMW. And of course they charged me $280 to do a scan to tell me that, hey, listen, yeah, you got a new module in here, but it's not coded. It still says brand new uncoded. So guy charged me $1,500 to put a part in and he didn't even code the part like he was supposed to, but he got $1,500. So be careful about taking your car to uh, shade tree mechanics or these side, side mechanics, not unless you're willing to risk bricking your car. And when I say bricking your car, that means you take it there running and when they stick that generic equipment to it, to scan it for, for problems of trying to code it, they mess up one of the, the computer modules or the computer, and now the car won't even start. And they're not, they're not gonna admit to being the fault for it. They're gonna tell you, you gotta pay for it. So just be careful about taking your I3 to, you know, these, these uh, side shops, because that's what I did. And long story short, in the end, I wound up coding my own car. I had to code my own car. I had to get the software that BMW uses and I had to code my own car. Because nobody who I took it to could code it. Or they told me it couldn't be done because of I don't know. They said it couldn't be done. So I said, you know what? If you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. So I got my car back from the last mechanic after about $7,000. And about three different mechanic shops in BMW. And I wound up coding my car myself and I got it right. Now there's still problems because my car is an older car. And one of the things that you all want to keep in mind when you're driving... Uh, an electric i3 is that over time with electricity and high voltage flow, flowing through cables creating a lot of heat over time what will happen is those uh, electric cables will get worn out they'll get dust in them and they'll dry rot And get water and moisture in it from you know driving in, in in wet weather or water puddles or even driving in high water because of, of major rains. You know, splashing water up from the road into your rear engine compartment. Eventually, water will get into your your connections, your wire connections, and it will start shutting out your wires and start causing your car to kick up errors like, you know, drivetrain errors. You know, those ones that say that you can continue to drive and there are even cases where when you got moisture in your wires, it can go as far as your car cutting off on you in the middle of an interstate 
And one thing about these I3s, and when they when they cut off, you got five seconds to get to the side of the road. So God forbid there's no big truck behind you, and you're in the middle lane with a car on both sides of you. You're gonna be in a heap of trouble. Because when that electric motor locks, it locks. And it comes to a, a, a screeching halt within about, I'll give it a minute. You have to have the car pulled over to the side of the road, into the grass or into the safety zone because it will come to a slide and stop. And if you're doing 70 miles an hour, you better figure something out real quick. And I said all of that because I've experienced it on a major interstate. Luckily, I was in on a side lane and I had to drive off it into the grass, ran over some, some hard stuff, car went bumping and lumping. But the moral to the story is it stopped safely. After it cut off, I cranked it, you know, turned it off, turned it right back on, and the car allowed me to continue driving. And with all that being said, I still love the i3. I still love the i3. It's a beautiful car. Uh, oh man, it performs awesomely. Torquey, speedy, sporty, and it's unique. It's different. Which is one of the reasons that I will hold on to this car for as long as I can because I just like being different and the i3 gives you all of that the i3 just gives you a good feeling um, but in the meanwhile um, I can say that I am about maybe, let me see what this next mile marker um, says. So I can tell you where I am. As far as range and how much range I have left. Probably at my, yep, I'm at mile marker 93, 93 miles, but according to uh, my electric range, I have 34 miles left. I got 93 miles to get home, but 34 miles range, which means I'm short by five miles. Now I'm not in eco mode or eco plus, e eco pro, uh, pro plus. So once I get off of my exit, I'll switch to eco pro plus. And I'm assuming that'll give me enough range to get home. Or I'll just have to keep that little white line in the center, which allow, which means I'm coasting. And I'm not using electricity. I normally keep my, my, my screen here. So I can see what's going on with the battery. Right now I'm pulling, but of course right now I'm coasting. I'm not using any electricity according to what the screen is telling me. But in the meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and get up off of here. I'm not gonna talk too, too long. Um, I'll pick back up with you guys when I get home. 
Uh, peace until the next time.